We are now on page five. Okay, I assume that you guys are good with the first section of 6.1, okay? Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me later. All right, so let's talk about how to resolve vectors. So you have to understand what resolve means, okay? Another vocab. So let's say you have this vector here, v. Resolving the vector means we're going to break down this vector into its x component and the y component. Okay, x component and y component. What we're going to do is draw a right triangle. Okay, draw a right triangle. Now, every vector has two things. What are those two things? Huh? Every vector has two things. What are those two things? Num number? Well, kind of, but it has a different name in the vector world. Magnitude and? Direction. Yes, very good. Magnitude and direction. Every vector has two things. Magnitude and direction. Physics. Yeah, physics. So, it has a magnitude. The magnitude is absolute, or not absolute, it's a... Uh, Magnitude of V, it's, it looks like that, absolute value, but it's just saying the length of V. It also has a direction, so some kind of angle from the x-axis, okay, from the zero degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down this vector into two components. One is in the x direction and the other one is in the y direction. All right, so this I need you and your partner to figure out. So if we were to draw, redraw this right triangle, you would have an X here, you have a Y here, you have some kind of angle here, and this is um, the magnitude V, so the length of V. So what I want you and your partner to figure out is, what is X? How long is X? According to all those things that I, I have given you. So you can see that using Sokotoa, x is unknown, v is known, so that is adjacent and hypotenuse, so cosine of theta is equal to x over uh, the magnitude of v, so that means x is equal to, uh, sorry, magnitude of v cosine theta, right? Using the same logic, can you figure out what y is? Yes. So using the same logic, uh, using the trig ratio, so y is the opposite side, uh, magnitude of v is the hypotenuse, so what kind of um, trig ratio is that? Oh. Sine. So then sine theta is equal to y over um, magnitude of v, so then y is equal to magnitude of v sine theta. Good? Okay. Now this pretty much, um, it's the same idea as a unit circle, right? We said the unit circle x direction is always cosine, y direction is always sine. And same thing here, the x direction has to do with the magnitude times cosine, the y direction is magnitude times sine. Okay, and I want you to remember this because um, when I went to college, like third year into college, uh, in one of the engineering classes, they said, well, x direction is um, hypotenuse cosine theta. And I was like, and everyone else is like, yep. And I was like, what? How do you guys all know that? How come I didn't know that? And then I was very upset that my high school teacher didn't teach me this. So then I feel really stupid <laughs> in college. And then it took me a while uh, to, like I had to force myself like, oh, cosine is x, cosine is x. And then I try to like, brainwashed myself for like two weeks. And then I was like, why? But why is that? And then so I went through the whole Sokotoa to convince myself, but it took a while. So I don't want you guys to have the same problem in college, uh, realizing what, how come I didn't know this and everybody else know it? Because it, it feels really horrible. Like you're like, why did all the people from my age went to high school with their teachers telling them this, but mine didn't. <laughs> So, um, okay, so that is that. X is cosine, Y is sine. All right, so that is resolving the vector into its component form. So let's look at one question. 
Find the components of the vector v with direction, angle, 115, and magnitude 6. Remember, every vector has magnitude and direction. So let's go ahead and draw this vector. Where is 115? This side. This side, right? Quadrant 2. So it's going to be somewhere here. Magnitude 6 means it's 6 units long. So that's kind of the length of the vector. And then this is 115. And this is six units long. Okay, so we need to figure out the component. Now, the component, again, is this uh, x length and the y length. Okay, x length and the y length. You could just use the formula to figure out what x and y are going to be. If you don't, and some people like to look at it from this angle, this angle is 65 degrees, please be careful. If you do use 65 degrees, you can see that x is going to the left, right? Mm -hmm. Going to the left means it's negative. If you're going to use 65 degrees, it's going to give you a positive number. So you have to mentally change it. So I don't like to do that. I just use 115 degrees. That way, it's already negative. Okay, so go ahead and resolve the vector into x and y components. Okay, the answer is negative 2.54 comma 5.44. Okay, you, you should always, you know, logically ask yourself, does this make sense? Uh, 115 is in quadrant two, that means x is negative, right? You can already see x is going to the left. Your answer has to be negative. If it's not negative, you know, you gotta ask yourself, why is that? Why is it not negative? Um, so check your angle or check, make sure your calculator is in the right mode you know something like that okay go ahead and practice with the next one all right the component form so double check yourself 120 is here magnitude is 2 so the component form is 2 cosine 120 2 sine 120 okay so that turns out to be 1 i'm oh, sorry negative 1 square root 3 or negative 1 1.73. Are you okay, Daniel? Okay, now we're gonna go backwards. Okay, I'm gonna give you um, a vector. You're going to figure out the magnitude and direction. Okay, this is very easy if you remember what we did two chapters ago. Okay, so first, the u vector. The u vector is three, two. So I want you to draw this vector. 3, 2. Look at your notes. Okay, 3, 2. 3, 2 is just the vector 3, 2. Now, this vector has a head at where? The tail ends at 3, 2. Where's the head? 0, 0. So it starts from 0, 0, ends at 3, 2. Now you need to figure out the magnitude. Let's do the magnitude first. That's a little easier. How long is this vector? How would you figure that out? How long is this vector? Yeah, so use Pythagorean theorem, right? If you want to figure out how long this line is, use Pythagorean theorem. So go ahead and figure out the magnitude of u. So the length of this vector is square root 13. Now, direction. Direction has to do with the angle. The angle is always from 0 degrees. So this one here. The question is, what is that angle? What can we do to find that angle? Uh, <laughs> tangent. Tangent is the fastest. So how are you going to use that? So you can see that this is a right triangle. This is 3, this is 2. 3 and 2 makes what trig function for this triangle? So we have adjacent and opposite. So that makes tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So go ahead and figure out what the angle is. Okay, theta is equal to 33.7 degrees. 
So magnitude and direction. Okay, let's have you guys try another one. This one is a little different. We are not in first quadrant anymore. Your direction angle has to be from zero degrees still. So please be careful on what that angle really is. Okay, find the magnitude, find the direction. Let me know when you're done. All right, magnitude. Magnitude of V is equal to square root 29. The direction angle is from zero degrees. So it's 248.2 degrees. Okay, please be careful on the direction angle. Okay, last one, a uh, word problem. A DC-10 jet aircraft is flying on a bearing, which means direction, of 65 degrees at 500 miles per hour. Find the component form of the velocity of the plane. Recall that bearing is the angle that the line of travel makes with due north, measured clockwise. Are you guys always me? Everyone's kind of like smiling at their laptop. Okay, so it's due north, that is this direction, and 65 degrees is this one here. Okay, this velocity vector has a magnitude and direction. The magnitude is 500. You need to find the component form. But isn't MPH and speed? Yes, speed and velocity are not the same. So that is... Um, a very important thing in physics and next year in calculus, we're going to talk about that a lot. Speed and velocity are not the same. Speed is the scalar, so it's a number. Velocity has a direction. So I can run this way for 5 miles per hour and run this way for 5 miles per hour. Veloc uh, speed is the same. Velocity is different because I'm pointing in different directions. Okay, so you need to find the X component and the Y component. Okay, let me know when you're done. Please write in um, component form. Okay, so some of you got tricked. Um, this angle is 25. You have to use 25 degrees if you're gonna use the component form, okay? So please be careful. Um, so that means... Wait, it's the same thing. It is the same thing, but you switch X and Y. Yeah. So this is gonna be 500 cosine 25 degrees, comma, 500 sine 25 degrees. Okay, and then that is 453.15, comma, 211.31. All right, so that is the end of section one. We're gonna go to section two. Um, we're gonna do the first part of section two today. The second part is a little bit tricky. So we'll spend a little more time on it. Okay, dot product. Very important. Dot product has another name, call, it's called inner product. So sometimes they'll say, what is the inner product of these two vectors? Or sometimes they'll say, what is the dot product of these two vectors? The result of a dot product is a scalar. What does scalar mean? What does scalar mean? <laughs> what does scalar mean? We did this in matrix. Yes, number. Scalar is a number. The reason I'm emphasizing this is dot pro the result of a dot product is going to be a number. A lot of times people forget what things they're supposed to get. They multiply two vectors together as a dot product. They get a vector out. That is impossible. Okay, you have to get a number out. All right, so let's take a look at dot product. Dot product is between two vectors. So let's say you have a vector like this, u. You have another vector like this, v. So now we're going to two vectors, okay? Before, we only have one vector. Now there are two. There's some angle in between them. What dot product does is it looks at the magnitude of the two and then tries to figure out what is the resulting amount that, is, that uh, results from these two vectors. Okay, dot product. Um, when you see u with a dot and then v, you don't say u times v. Um, you say u dot v. 
in the vector world, there are two ways to multiply two, two vectors together. So you have to be very specific. This is the dot product. Okay, dot product. When you take two vectors and you dot them together, very easy. You're going to take, um, so looking at this, u has the component u1, u2. v has the component u, uh, v1, v2. You're going to take u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. So you got to memorize that. Okay, the dot, uh, it's a scalar, yeah. So you're going to take u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. And that's going to give you a number, a scalar. The other definition, this is a little bit trickier, is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of the angle in between. Magnitude of u times magnitude of v times cosine of the angle in between. Okay, we're going to have to memorize these formulas. So let's take a look at this first one. Find the dot product of each one. So find the dot product of this one, a. That should be pretty easy. So first component times first component plus Second component times second component. Your answer is a scalar, not a vector. Remember, your answer is a scalar, not a vector. So if you end up with a vector, something is wrong. OK, so this one is 3 times 5 plus 4 times 2, which is 23. Again, please ask yourself, am I getting a number or am I getting a vector? Uh, that should tell you what it should be. OK, let's look at the next one. 2i minus j times uh, dot 3i minus 5j. OK, what is the vector form of 2i minus j? Hmm? 2, negative 1. Okay, 2, negative 1, dot, 3, negative 5. Um, what is the i vector? What is, 1, 0. So this is 2 times 1, 0, minus 1 times 0, 1. Right, so then this becomes 2, 0, minus 0, 1. So that is 2 minus 1. Okay, you don't have to go through that whole thing. It's basically very intuitive that 2i is just going to be 2. Minus j is just going to be minus 1. The answer is 11. All right, next. Let's reverse that. We are going to figure out the angle in between these two vectors. So let's go ahead and draw that. U is 2, 3. It doesn't have to be precise. We just want to see where U is. This is 2, 3. And then V is negative 2, 5. The question is, what is this angle? <gasps> that looks crazy. How do you find that angle? Oh, yeah. You can find this one, find this one, and then subtract everything from 180. Right? That'd be crazy. That's a lot of work. Therefore, we're going to use dot product. What does dot product do? Well, it says u dot v is equal to, this is the second definition that we didn't use yet. u dot v is equal to magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine of the angle in between which is the angle that we really, really want. So we need to figure out u dot v first. What is u dot v? Can you do this in your head? u dot v. 
<laughs> oh, Sorry. Okay, what is u dot v? 11? Uh, yeah, 11. 11 is equal to magnitude of u. You can do this in your head too, right? What is the magnitude of u? Huh? Square root 13? Okay, what is the magnitude of v? Square root 29. Okay, and then cosine of angle, which is the angle in between. So go ahead and figure out what the angle is. All right, so for the A, um, angle is 55.5 degrees. For B, if you finish that one, the angle is 135 degrees. Okay, let's talk about some special properties. Orthogonal, another new word. Orthogonal means perpendicular. Perpendicular. What does it mean to be perpendicular? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Okay, let's say that we have two angles that's 90 degrees. What is the angle in between them? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Okay, so let's think about a dot product. U dot V. U dot V. What is the formula for U dot V? Everybody. Uh, Magnitude of U. Times the magnitude of V. Cosine, cosine, cosine angle in between. All right. So let's think about this a little bit. Mm, we said if two angles are perpendicular, then the angle in between them has to be 90. Okay. So let's say that they are perpendicular. So this is going to be cosine 90 degrees. Oh, hold on. What is cosine 90 degrees? Zero. Zero. Therefore, if two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product has to be zero. zero. Okay, so if you get a zero for dot product, then the vectors must be zero. perpendicular. perpendicular. Oh. Okay, so this is how you check to see if two vectors are perpendicular or not. Okay, so how, uh, when the two vectors are orthogonal, what does orthogonal mean? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Then the dot product has to be? Zero. Zero. Why did you change the name? Um, in the vector world, uh, they're all different. So <sighs> I don't know if I should say sorry or that's just the way it is. <laughs> okay, so very important property. If the two uh, vectors, their dot product is zero, then it mu they must be perpendicular. Okay, check. Are they orthogonal? Okay, so are these vectors orthogonal? Yes. yes. How do you know? Zero. What's zero? The dot product. Okay, good. Dot product is zero. Therefore, it is orthogonal. Okay, let's really quickly go through some properties of dot product. U dot V, please don't say U times V. It's not times, they're dotting each other. Okay, so U dot V is the same as V dot U. So the order doesn't matter. Uh, some of them are the same. U dot U. U dot U is a very special property. It's going to be the magnitude of U squared. This is very useful later on, especially if you're going to take... Um, vector calculus in college. So this is a property you'll use very often. The zero vector dot v vector is just zero. Remember, it's not a zero vector. Dot product has to give you a number, okay? Number four, u dot v plus w. It's kind of like a distributed property. So u dot v plus u dot w. And same thing, if you reverse the order, you can go backwards. So u dot w plus v dot w. C u dot v. C is a scalar, that's why they don't bold it. C is a scalar, then you can change the order. So u times c times v. So basically you can put C inside that parentheses and then multiply it to a V vector, make it longer or shorter, and then dot uh, U.